All right, so let's talk about graphics this morning. Um, I learned uh, planting design and landscape design from hand drawing, and so that to me is how I think. So even though there's a ton of digital tools available, um, I think I, I think better and I design better when drawing by hand because there is this visceral connection between my hand and my brain. And the way that I like to do my plants is I like to pick up um, a few elements that are stylistically important to that plant. So we're not really drawing realistically. For example, in this plan, hopefully you can see it here. So in this tree, um, because it's up above everything, we don't want to do a really complicated symbol here because we need to see through the canopy down to the ground plane. So my trees are always going to be, almost always, if they're in a bed, are going to be marking where the center is and then just using a heavier line for the canopy. Um, I typically won't do like a perfect circle because no plants are perfect circles unless you're shearing them. So I'll make this sort of irregular edge and sometimes it gets super crazy depending on the plant I'm using. But I want to be able to show that there is, an, is in fact a tree here but I need to be able to see what's underneath. So I'll keep this really simple. If I had a tree in turf, that's when you can go crazy and show branching um, because we're not really concerned with showing what's on the ground plane underneath. And then if you look through um, the rest of this plan, again, it's not drawn realistically, but it is drawn stylistically. So I always use a symbol like this for say something large like a banana. Um, so I'm showing a giant leaf. I, I mean, it's so big too that I can show the midrib and some of the venation. And then there's like a generic tree here. Um, if you come in and look at this, um, I, I can't zoom in on my uh, camera phone, but all I've shown is um, this pretty distinctive fruiting structure here. So it's a, a calicarpa, uh, which is our beauty berry, and it's so unique. And I just want to sort of hint that that's what that plant is. So I've done that by um, showing like the, the fruit clustered like that. Um, and then you can see that I have some hostas in here. Um, I will use um, sort of uh, larger circles to, sh to hint at uh, leaf texture. So this one would be sort of a medium to medium coarse leaf here. And you can see that I don't need to do the whole thing, but you need to decide where your sun is coming from. And so um, there's going to be less foliage shown on this side and more shown on this side. Um, when I'm doing planting plans, I don't really care exactly where the sun is coming from. Shh, don't pass that on. But actually half the designers in the world are like that. So in a drawing like this, um, shadows on the top side tend to look a little top heavy. But if you're one of these designers where north is always up, that's where your shadows would be. So you just need to make a decision and just be consistent on your plans. I like to have my shadow on the bottom side, um, typically the bottom right, um, but that's just a, a stylistic preference really. So anyway, um, this sort of mask down here is just the way that I show gingers. Um, again, ground cover, I'll use this caffeinated squiggle and I'll just fill in. Um, this is uh, most likely a colocasia of some kind or other elephant ear. And so I wanted to show today how I show, how I draw my grasses. Um, I was asked that, and it's a great question. So let me make sure this is centered. And so your paper has to be secured. And so I just use two uh, drafting dots instead of four. Um, I used to say I do that because I'm cheap, but that sends the complete wrong message. So I'm just frugal, let's say, All right? So you need a circle template because you want to make sure that you've picked the right size. So, um, and you want to show the grass at a mature size. And so we need a circle template just to make sure we can draw the plant at the right size. And this really light outline will help us keep the edge of the grass blades that I'm about to draw consistent. So super light circle. And then I start in the center and I go out towards the edge and I'm doing a slight curve and I'm keeping, I've used a very thin pen weight too, by the way. And so I just go over to the edge and back to the circle, over to the edge, back to the circle, over to the edge, back to the circle. And 
depending on what kind of grass I'm drawing. Um, I'll either want to keep it super thin, so if it's a fine bladed grass, or if it's a larger blade grass, I'll make that look bigger like this. Um, so I think, um, Mick, you were talking about a pampas grass in your plan, so you would definitely show that as a larger, larger blade. So I'm just going to keep going around and around a couple times. And what's really fascinating, what happens is um, the edge of your plant symbol will naturally be light, but because you are coming back to the center every time, the center of the plant symbol gets darker, which is actually um, a little realistic because there's you know more blades of grass there and it's denser in the middle. So it ends up being a pretty nice effect. So just go around a couple times. Um, sometimes I'll come in and I'll go over one area a little bit heavier just to make it not look so uniform. So that's how I do a grass and plan. Um, when you look at that in elevation, you know, you want to think about the habit of your grass. Is it a, is it a grass that um, bran uh, branches, that kind of falls back down to the, the ground so it, it arches all the way over? For us, that would be our uh, Gulf Coast muley, uh, Mulinbergia capillaris. Um, it goes all the way over, but a lot of grasses will just be this beautiful, like arching or fairly upright grass. So the technique is the same, where you're always going to the, the height and then back down to the center. Grasses are typically clustered at the base and then they arch out gently. So again, I'm going to the edge and I haven't done any guidelines on this, so I'm just sort of eyeballing it at this point and back down to the ground. And then again, I'll make a few heavier blades just to kind of, that looks really uptight. It's an uptight grass. Let me see if I can loosen that up a little bit and kind of feather out that dense middle. That's a little too dense in the middle for me. And a lot of times when you're drawing, it's like everything is, almost everything is fixable. Um, there's a very famous um, uh, graphic person, Mike Lynn, in this country, and he's like, you know, if it's not looking good, just keep working the drawing. You just say you're not done yet. All right, so it's kind of weird. It's a little too dark in the middle, but you get the idea. Then if you want, you can show some of the inflorescence, right? So um, maybe you have a very small seed head very dainty, very airy. You can just dot it in like this. So again, this is sort of our, uh, I'm kind of mixing like a different plant form, but this is like the symbol I would use for like our, our muley grass. So super thin um, stems here and then really airy seed heads. So you can do that. Um, Mick, you said you're, I think uh, you're doing the pampas grass. So again, you would show like a, a, a wider blade Same thing, um, see it actually looks better when you go faster. You know, if you meticulously, painstakingly draw something, a lot of times the, it's not really worth the time if you draw something fast, it looks better. So let's just say that's a pampas grass. Um, those flower heads or seed heads are much bigger, so you would actually see more mass, so maybe you draw it like this. And how, how many you put in is completely up to you. But you can see like how loose and open it is, or you know, my, my drawing is. So again, it's, it's not a realistic drawing, it's just stylistically. So if someone saw this versus this, you can kind of get a hint at what kind of grass it is. Although obviously this would be a much smaller grass, this is a much larger grass. I've jumped scales on you just to be confusing. So that in a nutshell is how I do my grasses. So um, I'm going to also upload for you like this, this drawing so you can um, just sort of see the different kinds of symbols that I use. And I think it's important to note that you can see that I've used some fancier graphics for the stylistic uh, message, if you will, but I haven't done that with everything, right? So some symbols are fairly generic and that's okay, right? You don't need to make everything be visually commanding. Our brains probably couldn't handle that. So it's almost like in a planting design, you want the eye to bounce over some of it, land on something that's important, 
bounce around some more, land on something else that's important. So um, you don't need to make every, every graphic symbol important. So that's it. Happy to field any other emails you have. Thanks so much. Have a great day.